Want to know how to get started with Appium 2.0? Does it matter if you call it monitoring or observability? You're also going to want to stay to the very end to see the five CI CD breaches analyzed and how they impact your security testing. So stay tuned to these and other end to end full pipeline DevOps, automation testing, performance testing, and security testing, 10 minutes or less in this episode of the Test Field News Show for the week of June 27th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Skill News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apply Tools. Apply Tools is a next generation test automation platform, which is powered by visual AI, which helps you increase quality, accelerate delivery, and reduce costs with the world's most intelligent test automation platform. But seeing is believing. So create your free account now by clicking on the link in the comment down below. And while you're there, why not leave a comment and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode? First up, automation news. So first off, I don't know if you know that GitHub Copilot is now a paid solution. When they first released it, it was free. So if you're jonesing for a free option, Amazon just launched Code Whisper, which is a GitHub Copilot-like AI paired programming tool. So why should you care about this if you're a software tester or an automation engineer? Well, if you import a library like, say, Rest Assured or another library like Appium or Selenium, this will help you write better code automatically. It'll assist you as you're writing. And as I mentioned, this has the same functionality that Copilot does. It can auto-complete entire functions based only on a comment or a few keystrokes. And the company trained the system to learn on a billion lines of publicly available open source code and its own code base, as well as publicly available documentation and code on public forums. The article does point out that it's worth noting that the Code Whisperer does some things different than Copilot. For one, while most of the code that the system generates is novel, every time it generates code that is close to an existing snippet in its training data, it will note that and highlight the license of the original function, which is also very important. So it's then up to the developer to decide whether or not to use it. And this should then hopefully alleviate some issues you saw earlier with other news items we had on copyright concerns that may come up by using a tool like this. And also AWS made security a priority. And so they said security is also important to AWS. And so they wanted to make sure that the code they generated was also secure. So just another great development that I think really is going to help you as an automation engineer, write better, more secure code using these types of technologies. So definitely check it out in the first comment down below. So you may be saying, Joe, can I even trust machine learning technology like this or AI technology as well? To answer that question, I found another article that goes over, can AI actually be trusted? And so this next article is by Beth Rudin, who is an IBM Distinguished Engineer and Principal Data Science Cognitive and AI Services at IBM. So you know she really knows her stuff. So she goes ahead and breaks down some terminology, goes over what do certain things mean within AI. And she also offers some steps that you can run through on how to actually assemble trusted AI. Are you looking for an all-in-one web and mobile API testing solution? So SmartBear, which acquired Bitbar a few years ago, actually just released an all-in-one web and native mobile testing solution release of web testing on Bitbar. So if you're not familiar with Bitbar, it's an all-cloud, all-testing platform, whether you need to test web, native, or hybrid, Securely test your apps across real environments. No lab maintenance required. So for this type of solution you're looking at, here's another one to add to your list of vendors to evaluate. So not sure if you're aware, but the folks at Appium have been announcing version 2.0 for a little bit now. So Aran Kinsbrunner just released a new article on getting started with Appium 2.0. And so the article goes over some of the more exciting features of Appium 2.0, what it means to you, and also has a great breakdown of how to get started with some code examples and some other testing awesomeness. So if you know Iran Kinsbrunner, he really knows his stuff. So definitely a worthwhile article to check out if you're doing anything with Appium automation. And in other AI automation testing news, another company has unveiled yet another AI-enabled automation testing platform. What makes this different from what I've seen before is this also supports embedded automation using assisted machine learning. So the company is Scient, I think. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And their AI-powered framework for automated testing is called SciFast, and it was created to accelerate end-to-end -end test automation. And the platform enables end-to-end -end test automation across not only web, mobile, desktop, also embedded applications 
in hardware devices, like I said, is different than what I've seen from some of the other solutions. It mentions that while more than 90% of enterprises are thinking about integrating software and digital technologies into their products, only 25% have managed to scale their initiatives across multiple product lines and geographies, including huge potential for future growth. So if you're looking to do automation in like automotive, medical, or embedded type systems, definitely uh, a solution to check out. I've never heard of it before. Uh, give it a look and let me know what you think. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So when I started my career, I did mainly performance testing. And so I'm very familiar with monitoring APM type solutions. But over the past few years, there's been a transition to uh, site reliability engineering. I think there's been kind of some confusion around certain terms. So what I used to call monitoring, a lot of people are now calling observability. So monitoring, observability, monitoring, observability. What do you call it? Does it even matter? Well, this next article addresses this exact issue. It basically it breaks down, it doesn't matter what you call it if you're not measuring the right things. And it talks about, you know, back four years ago, Google, when you did search for application performance monitoring, you saw a list of APM type of uh, services. But now when you go to the present, most of these vendors, same names, but now they're called observability companies. And monitoring does sound a little outdated. Observability sounds more hip, newer, more scientific. But when you look under the hood, it's actually the same exact approaches not very different from what they were back in the day. So this article then breaks down how to understand observability and how to avoid certain blind spots that can get you into trouble about monitoring the wrong things. So it just breaks down some terminology of what is observability and also breaks down what things you should be monitoring, what things you should avoid monitoring or can suck down the rabbit hole of monitoring. So I think it's a great breakdown of terminology and how both monitoring and observability are basically the same thing. So if you're an old timer like me, you can still get into the site reliability observability game. So good to know. So speaking of site reliability engineering and terminology, if you're newer to SRE, uh, there are some other terms that may be throwing you off and that is the difference between severity and priority. So this next article walks you through what the differences are. So this article goes over what is severity, what is priority, how are they different, how to set up se severity levels for your organization, how to determine severity levels, has a nice breakdown of what some common severity levels are and what they mean, and with a conclusion that wraps it all up. So if you're struggling to find out what they mean or you just want some clarification of your own, another article you can definitely check out in that first comment down below. Next up, security testing. Now, I'll be honest, I love Python. But when I speak to some other hardcore like C developers, a lot of times they say they don't trust Python because they tell me they don't feel like it's a secure programming language. And so this next article highlights how some Python packages recently were caught sending stolen AWS keys to unsecure sites. And it talks about multiple malicious Python packages available on the PyPy repository were caught stealing sensitive information like AWS credentials and transmitting it to publicly exposed endpoints accessible by anyone. And the article talks about while PyPy is usually quick to respond to reports of malicious packages on the platform, there's no real vetting before submissions. So dangerous packages may be lurking in there for a while. And this article just breaks down some of the malicious packages that they found and how it exposes stolen data. So if you're an automation engineer that uses Python, I think this is definitely something you should be aware of and check out as well. So you know, based on past episodes, if you've been listening for a while, how I like to find exploits that happen in the field and what companies do to resolve it. So this next one is about five CI CD breaches analyzed and why you need to update your software security approach based on this analysis. And so this analyzes some of the major CI CD breaches that happened recently. So it goes over the PHP Git infrastructure compromise, the Stack Overflow breach, the Code Cove breach. It goes over the Travis CI secret exposure, and also it goes over the dependency confusion attacks. And it also has some key takeaways as well. So for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head on over to the links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools free account offer and discover how to take your animation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Skill News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end -end full stack pipeline automation awesomeness. As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.